exercise 8.4 is the same exact problem as exercise 8.3, except 8.3, this is the borrower. This is the company that borrowed the money and will pay interest. This is the company that lent the money. This is the lender, and they will receive the interest. So, when the company that borrowed the money recorded a notes payable and a cash inflow, the lender recognized a note receivable of $21 million and an outflow of cash of $21 million. It's the same transaction, but from the bank's point of view. Then on December 18th, or December 18 of December of 18 of 2018, we had to recognize the interest expense. Here it was interest expense. For the bank, it's not interest expense, it's interest revenue and interest receivable, but it is the same exact number. 787500 so that's a debit to interest receivable of 787500 and a credit to interest revenue 787500 and just to remind you how we got that number we took 21 million we multiplied it by the 5 twelfths August, September, October, November, December, and we multiplied it by 9%, and that's how we got that number. Now, in January of 2019, the borrower is paying back the money, the lender is getting their money. So that's what we're going to do now. So the lender is going to get the 21,945,000. That's how much cash they're going to get. Or at least if I can write it down, they will. And just as that was broken up between interest expense and interest payable, now the accounts are interest revenue. That equates to our interest expense and interest receivable which is equal to our interest payable. So the interest revenue is for one month, and that's 157500 And again, that's the 21 million times the one twelfth, the one, one month of a year, times 9%. It's the interest receivable that we recognized up here, 787500 and it's the entire amount of the note that's going away, which is the $21 million. So this problem in conjunction with 8.3 lets you see how the transactions flow between the lender and the borrower and how the transactions are mirrored from one entity to the other.